Hello everyone and welcome. This is Stephen Primo. I want to thank you for joining us today. Today uh, we have a special guest speaker. We have the founder of the Candlestick Forum, Mr. Stephen Bigelow. Now, just to give you a little background about Mr. Bigelow, he has uh, been involved in the markets for over 25 years with his investment experience, including eight years as a stockbroker with major Wall Street firms such as Kidder Peabody, uh, Cowan Company, as well as Oppenheimer and Company. Uh, this was followed by 15 years of commodity trading, overlapped with 12 years of real estate investing. Now, he also holds a business and economics degree from Cornell University and has lectured at Cornell as well, and as well as many other private educational investment functions over the past 20 years. Now, Mr. Bigelow has advised professional traders from money managers to mutual fund managers and hedge funds and is recognized by many in the trading community as the professional's professional. He is also an affiliate of the Market Technicians Association or MTA and is also a member of AAPTA or the American Association of Professional Technical Analysis. So we have a great speaker with you today and he's going to talk about the topic which is how to score an unfair advantage over other traders. So please uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Stephen Bigelow. Steve? Well, thank you, Steve, and welcome, everybody. I guess the first question, so I know how fast or how slow to go, is uh, asking uh, everybody whether they have seen any of my candlestick presentations in the past. OK, looks like. Uh, All right, a little over 50 percent. So I'll okay. I'll I'll uh, kind of gauge it from that factor. So um, anyways, all right. When I started at Candlesticks, it actually was about 35 years ago. Maybe let's see. When I just graduated from college, I was a stockbroker with Kidder Peabody. Got out of the business because realized that the brokerage firms didn't know any more about what made a stock go up or down as anybody else. And then somebody dropped candlesticks on my desk. And uh, the more I looked at candlesticks, the more uh, uh, the more I uh, realized that uh, it made a lot of sense. And so I went through and I started learning everything I could about candles back at that time. Again, this was well over 25, probably getting on to toward 35 years ago at this point. And, uh, at that time, there wasn't there many people out there using candlesticks, so I had to learn every single one of them myself. I didn't have anybody around to get second opinions on to see whether I was learning correctly. I tell people back then, the only time I got a second opinion was when I would go to the doctor. I'd ask, what's wrong with me? And he goes, you're fat. And I said, well, I think I want a second opinion. And he goes, all right, you're ugly, too. So I had to learn everything I could about candlesticks on my own, but what it boiled down to is basically it's common sense investor perceptions put into a graphic depiction. So with that, uh, what I'm going to kind of try to do is show why uh, you, using candlestick signals, you get a lot more information. It gives you, gives you kind of an unfair advantage. And part of the aspects of using candlestick signals is we also use what we call the T-line, which is the eight exponential moving average. Now, the candlestick signals themselves are the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. So I usually tell people, prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. So if uh, candlestick signals are a uh, factor of human emotions, which moves prices, the T-line, which nobody uses, it's not like a 50-day or a 200-day or a 20-day simple moving average, which all the major money managers around the world use as their uh, to make their decisions, those moving averages act like magnets. The T-line works very effectively, and there is nobody using it. So they aren't working off of uh, uh, prices moving to those levels, because that's where everybody expects them to. The T-line acts kind of like a uh, natural Fibonacci-type number or uh, support and resistance level. So the biggest thing that I uh, gained out of using candlestick signals was this was a remarkably accurate predictive type of uh, trading entity. And as I started using it, now fortunately before I started using it, I was probably one of the worst investors in the world. I did everything absolutely wrong. And when candlesticks came along, 
it showed me I could be in trades with high probabilities of being in the correct trade at the correct time. But the biggest mental hurdle that I had to get through was that even if you expected to win 70% of the time, which is a very high uh, uh, probability factor, what else can you expect? You can expect that you're going to lose 30% of the time. So not only does candlestick signal show you when to get into positions, but it works very effectively when to get out of positions and or when to take profits. So using candlestick signals with the T-line is just kind of a powerful combination of putting the probabilities in your favor. So if I can do that, where every time I can put on a factor on my chart that will improve my probabilities to instead of maybe being a 30% losing ratio, if I can move that down to a 28.2 or a 29.1 or a 27.9, every time I improve my probabilities of not being in a losing trade and in a winning trade, that kind of grows your uh, returns exponentially. Um, what candles do you tell you when to sell? Uh, Ruben, out of the 50 or 60 uh, signals out there, I came up with uh, eight or 12, what we call the 12 major signals, which are basically 12 or six buy signals and six sell signals. And I'll have to briefly go through this because we're kind of going through the next stage of this is how to use the signals and patterns and the T-line as uh, uh, keeping your emotions out of your trading. So basically it boils down to the T-line is this black line. Here's, here's the moving averages that you see on my charts, which you can see aren't very, uh, don't have a whole lot of indicators on here. The red is the 200-day simple moving average. The blue is the 50-day simple moving average. And the 20 is the, this gray line, 20 simple moving average. Again, the reason they're on here is because every major money manager around the world uses those to make their decisions. The important one is the black line. This is the T line, the trigger line, um, the eight exponential moving average. And there's one simple rule. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. Conversely, if you see a candlestick sell signal, and a close below the T-line. You can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. Now, when candlesticks first came along, I was making very good money just trading off the uh, candlestick charts. And when we applied the T-line to it, my returns started growing that much greater uh, because it kept me in positions where I might have gotten out of. Uh, but as long as you don't see a candlestick sell signal, and a close below the T-line, you stay in the position. Uh, these charts are all going to be daily charts. So there's two questions. What charts do these work on? One, the time frame. The candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. That time frame could be, uh, don't worry, the charts will come on here. Uh, the time frame can be a daily, weekly, monthly if you're a long-term investor or a one-minute, three-minute, ten-minute combination if you're trading the minis. Um, and a lot of people ask, well, this is only stock charts. Do they work on Forex? Do they work on commodities? Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of human emotions. It doesn't matter what market you're trading. They work just as effectively on all, all markets. So if we see the signals, for example, my stochastics are 1233. Basically, it boils down to if you see candlestick buy signals in the oversold condition, the probabilities are you're going to be in an uptrend. The probabilities become that much greater when you see a candlestick buy signal, such as these bullish haramis, which basically tells you the selling has stopped. This is what we call a doji sandwich. And I'm going to go through these real quick because this had to be a whole other session on showing the uh, different signals and patterns. But a doji sandwich is a bullish signal a doji, and there's a very simple rule of the doji, which is it's going to trade in the direction of how they open it the next day. So if you see a doji and they open up positive, you buy immediately because the doji sandwich is at this, the magnitude of this candle right here is usually the same magnitude as this candle right here, which means if they're buying and they're going to close up here, they're closing above the T-line, that's time to be in this uptrend. Um, I, I'm reading your questions. Unfortunately, 
the only problem I've had with GoToWebinar is I can't figure out how to make the font bigger so I can read better. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through charts, and then I'll come back and try to read some of your questions. So don't be afraid to ask questions. If I've skipped it, it's not because I've intentionally skipped it. It's because I missed it. And then I'll stay around as long afterwards as people have questions. So here's uh, the dojis. Remember, the dojis are where they open and close right at the same level, which basically tells you there's indecision going on between the bulls and the bears. So if I see a bullish confirmation, I could be buying here, or if they gap it up, a lot of people say, shoot, I don't want to buy a stock that's already up 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, 80 percent. You do if the signal and pattern tells you that that's where the bulls are buying because there's usually going to be more upside. A bullish engulfing signal, doji doji, close above the T-line. As long as it stays above the T-line, you stay long. There's one caveat to that. You stay long, but the, the caveat is the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability they're going to come back and test it. So if I start seeing the price move, and this is, again, the very basic uh, common sense aspects of candlestick signals is developed by the Japanese rice traders. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So we can tell when the exuberance are coming in based on the gapping up, the uh, magnitude of the uh, signals, and how far away it's moved from the T-line. So if I see exuberant buying coming in, and I see a hanging man, Harami, telling me the buying has stopped, that tells me, and, and on top of that, I'm a good distance away from the uh, T-line, I'm going to start taking profits up here because the probabilities are pretty good that they're going to come back and at least test the T-line. Are they going to support here? We won't know that until they get there. And the worst case scenario, and this is one of my emotional problems that I had for years, is, boy, I finally got a winner. Got a winner. Got a winner. Oh, some profit taking. Oh, maybe a sell. Oh, if I sell... Boy, would I look stupid if this just kept going on up and this was the Dell of our lifetime. Um, and I would hang on to it, and I'd hang on to it, and hang on to it until it got all the way back down here. And then I'd say, why the heck didn't I take profits up here? Well, now I get through that emotional problem is when I see a candlestick reversal signal and it's time to take profits, I get out. And if the pattern sets up for a J-hook pattern, which we'll get to later, where it bounces off the T-line, comes back up, I'm not afraid to buy back in, uh, knowing it's heading in the right direction. Again, there's the signals. Big shoot, or, uh, 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 spinning top, kind of a doji type situation. And notice where it bounced. Smack dab off the 50-day moving average, closed above the T-line. We can be buying. We can be buying here. Or we can be buying here. Why? Because we've had a buy set up and they broke out through this area. Tells us we're in wave three. If that's wave one, wave three is going to be the same magnitude. Anytime I can add all the indicators to being in a high probability trade, there's my doji sitting smack dab on the 50-day moving average. Which way are they going to move it? Simple rule of a doji. They're going to trade in the direction of how they open it. They trade a positive. They close above the T-line. Stochastic's in the oversold area. This is a good time to start buying. The probabilities are extremely strong that you're going to be in an uptrend. On the other hand, where are your stop losses? And this was another thing that took the emotion out of my trading. If I bought here and the next day it opened here and closed back below the T-line, tells me they're not above the T-line, close out the position. I've been in the business for 40 some odd years now, I hate to say that, and every money manager tells you to cut your losses short and let your profits run. And in that 40 years, I've never heard a single one of them tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick signals make it very simple. If this is the buy signal telling you the bulls are in control, they shouldn't close it more than halfway down this candle or the bears are in control and they shouldn't close it back below the T-line. That tells you you're not in an uptrend. You close out the position and go on to the next one. All right, let me take a look at some questions. Uh, uh, time frame, we did that. Uh, when you get a chance, will there be a recording? I think, yes, this is being recorded. A sell signal is just a bearish candle and a buy signal. 
only green bullish. Uh, yeah, there's formations. There's a uh, six strong buy formations, strict six uh, sell formations. And the nice thing that the Japanese rice traders did for us is not only did they show us the formations, but they also told us what the investor psychology was that created those signals. So um, if you can learn the signals and the psychology of why that signal was formed, you basically have the same understanding as a seasoned trader of 15 years. Uh, um, does your method work on range bars or only time related candles. Uh, I don't know uh, what a range bar is, uh, JR. What is the 3T line? That's the three exponential moving average, which very simply states that if you start moving away from the T line and you start seeing a sell signal below or closing below the 3T line, it's probably coming back to the T line. It just gives you a quicker trigger on taking profits. Uh, how do you get to the key line? It's the eight exponential moving average. What is the oscillator on the bottom of the chart? That's your stochastics. My stochastic settings are 1233. That's nothing set in gold or stone. Gold. <laughs> but it's very simple. If I see a sell signal in the overbought condition, it's time to sell. If I see a buy signal in the overbought condition, I'm sorry, the oversold condition, it's time to buy. Um, there's that buy signal, left-right combo, with a spinning top doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. And so if I'm buying, especially if they gap up, again, this got rid of the fear of buying a gap up. A lot of people say, I don't want to buy a stock. I'm going to wait for it to pull back. And my answer to that is, why the heck do you want to wait for it to pull back? If it's pulling back, that tells you the, bear, the bulls aren't that strong. The bears are still around. I don't want it to pull back. I want to be buying into strength and having that strength take me up to the next uh, area that tells me whether the uh, whether it's going to go through or whether the sellers are going to take control. If I see a big sell signal, this is a bearish engulfing signal. If they open it lower the next day, again, the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's been a change of investor sentiment, you start going short. Um, let me check. Uh, da -da -da. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, as long as you understand the signals. Uh, um, and I'm just reading some of these questions. Uh, are your candlesticks any different to Steve Nissan's? Uh, no, they're all the same. Um, I just happen to use, uh, I, don't, I don't try to tell people to learn all 50 or 60 of them. I tell people learn the 12 major signals and you'll have more trades than you'll ever be able to handle in your lifetime. Also, a lot of people say, well, um, uh, a lot of people ask, well, do you use any other indicators? You can add candlesticks on top of your charts on whatever other trading mechanism or trading program you're using. It's going to make it that much more clear to understand what's happening in that, that price trend. Um, I think I missed the definition of the T-line, the eight exponential moving average. Um, range bars represent a certain number of pips instead of a certain amount of time. Uh, that I don't know. All I know is you can put uh, candlesticks on a, uh, uh, a 4x chart and it'll work just as effectively as if you were trading stocks, commodities, bonds, or tulip bulbs. Um, do you ever use pivot points? I don't, um, but uh, John Persons, a good friend of mine, uses candlesticks in conjunction with his pivot points. Um, what are the other email, parts from the eight email? I think we did that, the uh, 50, the 200, and the, uh, the 20. Uh, is, now, volume is not part of the analysis. Volume and price have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Now, the only time volume does come into effect is if you happen to see a big reversal signal and there's a volume spike, that basically tells you there's a lot of stocks changing ownership. And that means there's probably going to be more of more probabilities that trend is reversed. The green line is the 3T line, which is a whole other uh, uh, factor. Uh, I don't use Heiken Ashi. I helped write some of the formulas for Heiken Ashi for some of my uh, analytical buddies years back. 
but it's more of a, uh, I want to say a, a vanilla, what do I want to say, uh, it's kind of a lagging indicator. Um, the best indicator that I have found in the last 40 years is the uh, T-line, using the candlestick signals with the T-line. Um, so there's an 8 EMA and a 3 EMA. Yes, the 8 exponential moving average is your, your predominant uh, trend indicator. Nobody uses it, so when you see it trading above and bouncing right off of it, it's because it's a kind of a human natural number. The 3 T-line works effectively if you start to move away from the T-line. Sometimes your price moves so fast it moves away from the uh, T-line, which usually means it's going to come back and test the T-line, but you stay long as long as it stays above the 3 T-line. Uh, what time, best time frame for Forex, whatever time frame you're trading. You just set up your charts based upon uh, whether you're trading uh, pretty fast, you might use a 5-minute, 10-minute, 30-minute uh, combination. If you're trading slower, you might use a 10-minute, 30-minute uh, hourly combination. Do you wait to the end of the day before making your entry? Uh, most of my entries are done within the 30, first 45 minutes of the day, and exits are usually in the last 20 or 30 minutes of the day. The rest of the day is just noise unless there's some severe price movement. Does this work for option trades? Yes, very well, because basically all you're doing is it works very well for timing of the option trades. Uh, what is the, uh, the blue? The blue is the 50, the gray is the 20, simple moving average, and there's not a red one on here, but the red one's the 200-day moving average. All right, let me uh, buzz through this uh, again. Anytime I see buy signals and a gap up through the T-line, the higher the probability there's been a change of investor sentiment. This is our morning star signal, a big down day, a day of indecision. The third day, closing more than halfway up this candle, and above the T-line makes it very simple. If this opens positive the next day, I want to be buying because it will be confirming not only my morning star signal, but it will be confirming that the T-line is not acting as a resistance anymore. So anytime I see a buy signal, I know the probabilities are in my favor of being in, a, in an uptrend. Now, some of those uptrends can be pretty well, well let's say, evaluated as far as a strong uptrend versus just an uptrend. When I start seeing dojis and then confirming, dojis confirming, there's your doji sandwich telling us they're staying above this uh, downtrending channel and above the T-line. And I know the aftermath of a doji uh, sandwich. It's going to be more upside. So I can stay comfortably long, even on days where things look doubtful, until I actually see a close back below the T-line. Uh, what time frame do you use daily? Depends on what I'm trading. If I'm trading commodities like soybeans or live cattle, I may use a 5-minute, 10-minute uh, uh, combination, and my entry and exit is off the 1 minute. Um, I don't usually use the 3T line, only when the price moves away uh, dramatically away. So to improve your probabilities, if we know what the doji is, and if it's forming right at the T line, it much, pretty much tells us we're at a resistance level. If they open up positive after a doji, this is what we call a T-line crunch. Notice how the T-line won't let the price, or the price can't close below the T-line, and the T-line keeps crunching it back up into the resistance level, the 50-day moving average. Well, we're right here at the 50-day moving average with a doji. And remember our simple rule of a doji, it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. Well, if they open a positive, we don't have to wait for any more confirmation than that. We're buying aggressively on the open because that told us the probabilities that they were moving it higher. Not only were they moving it higher, but they had a potential of doing a doji sandwich, which told us they were moving it higher. And number two, they were not resisting at 50 anymore. That tells us that everybody else is watching this. Somebody said, how many days do you need to confirm a trend reversal? In candlestick analysis, it's zero. All you have to do is see the signal and it confirming the next day. Uh, that means everybody else that has to wait two, three, four days, they're just adding profitability to our trades. So if I see a situation like this, I'm looking for the obvious. Stochastics in the oversold area, buy signals right on the 50-day moving average, a close above the T-line, the next day they did a doji, makes my entry very simple. If they open this positive after a doji, it's going to move positive. And how much is it going to move positive? Usually the same magnitude as the previous day. Give me a doji sandwich. 
then telling me that this is now bouncing off the 50 and we're back in our uptrend and we can pretty well tell where our target's going to be at the top of that trend channel. So a series of dojis, if a doji means indecision between the bulls and the bears, a series of dojis means greater indecision and that just gives us a much higher probability trade that if we see a series of dojis and a close above the uh, T line, we want to be a buyer because after this indecision, that's telling us they've made their decision of which way they want to go. Again, this is not rocket science. This is just simple common sense investor uh, deduction after what goes on in uh, human nature. Lots of indecision down here, a close above the T line, it's time to be buying. Very simply, what would get us back out of this trade? Quick claim back and close below the T line and halfway down this candle it tells us the bears are still in control. You close out the position and move on to the next one. Works on anything that has human emotions in it. Tick chart, uh, uh, forex, tulip bulbs, any anything. This is just a measurement of human emotion and all you have to do is realize that prices only move based upon human emotions. Um, have you ever seen or how often have you seen a fantastic earnings report coming out for a stock and it drops like a rock? That's because the investor sentiment was expecting something even different. Um, uh, how do you set up your entries and stop losses? If I was looking at this chart, saying, all right, I've had a series of doji that close above the uh, T line. If this opens and trades positive tomorrow, I'm going to be a buyer. If I'm a buyer, where do I not want to see it close? I don't want to see it close more than halfway down this candle. So my my setup is already in place uh, based upon what the uh, candlestick signals are telling us. I, I don't avoid earnings because remember, if you go back to the very simple statement of the candlestick signals or the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame, if they're buying going into earnings, that tells you that probably somebody a lot smarter than me knows what's going on and they're buying and usually the chart is going to work in the direction that the uh, the uh, signals indicate. Now are there surprises? Definitely, that's why they're called surprises. But I, uh, I boil it down to that uh, the probabilities are in your favor that for every time I've been hit with a negative surprise, I've probably had four to five, six times that in positive surprises. So, again, this isn't rocket science. All you have to do is analyze and be able to see the uh, charts. I tell people, you don't have to be a technical analyst. All you have to do is be able to see. It's like the old couple that are getting ready for bed, and she's standing there in front of the mirror naked saying, look at me. My face is wrinkly. My arms are skinny. My, my butt's scrawny. My legs are spindly. And she turned around to her husband and says, is there anything nice that you can say about my body that would make me feel good? He goes, well, your eyesight's still pretty good. So as long as you can see, you can analyze what's going on in human nature and when to be buying and when to be selling. Notice all the dojis here. This is telling you a story. This is telling you there's lots of indecision. And what happened here? They told you what their decision was. And usually after this much indecision, usually the decision is going to be very uh, uh, long term. There was a case where it's time to be buying, it's time to be out, it's time to get back in, especially if they open this positive and do a doji sandwich. Now we have what we call one of our patterns, which we call a scoop pattern, which is a flat handle, and then a scoop, and our expectation is a slingshot effect to the first resistance level and the next resistance level, the fill in the gap. What did you find is your historical uh, win loss ratio profit factor. Oh, because I've done so many trades, I would suspect I am correct somewhere around 65, 72 percent of the time. But the important factor is that I'm out of my losses very quickly, and I let the uh, the winners run, and the winners I can tell are uh, running just by one simple factor. If I see a a, a pattern breaking out. This is a fry pan bottom, one of the Japanese uh, patterns. It looks like a fry pan bottom. You couldn't trade this any 
anyways. It was up and down, just junky, until they broke it out with a doji gap up. That's you call your best friend. If you see a doji followed by a gap up, that tells you after that day of indecision, they've made their decision. And if that's a breakout of a pattern, you just stay long as long as you don't see a sell signal to close back below the T-line. So again, if I had bought here, or even had bought here, and it closed back down here, I'm back out of the trade. So I'm out of the trade very quickly. If I bought here and it kept doing like this, I stay in the trade for a long time, and my using my upside uh, profits are are very good. So my rate of return, I have no idea. I just know that going from being one of the worst investors in the world, I live extremely comfortably, and I try to buy at least one classic car every two to three weeks, which means right now I've got 20 or 30 of them, I guess 22, 25 cars, uh, most of them sitting out in the driveway because I have to build a car barn to store them all. Fry pan bottom, where's the optimal entry? Just very simply, this puts the probabilities in your favor that your T-line is pushing you up, You've got a doji sandwich. You've got to close above the uh, beginning of the uh, fry pan bottom. And what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A very strong price move. And when we see that fry pan bottom breakout, what do we expect uh, after a very strong price move? The potential of a J-hook pattern. So if we're taking profits up here, there's our doji sandwich take, keeping up above the T-line. I have no qualms about taking profits in here somewhere and buying back here. It used to be that I wouldn't do it because, boy, would I look stupid if I sold here and bought back here and it went right back down again, and, boy, would I look stupid. Now at least I know when I'm selling, it's time to sell, and when I'm buying, it's time to be buying. Time to buy, uptrend, time to sell, time to buy, or buy right here on the breakout. Just kind of gives you a road map of when to be in. Now notice how far away you are from the T-line. You're starting to see a dark clouds type situation. Take some profits. You can always buy back. Nice fry pan bottom breakout. The further away you move from the T-line, very simple uh, stop loss strategies. If you're that far away from the T-line, you better have your stop loss at the previous days open because if they could come bring back down through there when you're well up in the overbought area and away from the T-line, that tells you there's profit taking going on. You want to be out at that level. So the, the nice thing about candlestick analysis is it has very simple common sense rules that uh, we all know. We just don't apply them at the uh, appropriate time. And again, this is because uh, the, the reason I became such a good candlestick trader is because once again, I was the worst investor in the world. All I had to do was do opposite of, or just do what the charts were telling me versus what my emotions were telling me, and I would turn around and be a hundred eighty percent better trader, or a reverse trader. There's a dumpling top, the opposite of the fry pan bottom. You're in a downtrend until you see a buy signal in the. Uh, so you, at this point, when you start seeing these cells, you can start shorting the stock. Dumpling top, start shorting until you see a buy signal to close above the T-line. Drop back down. There's another dumpling top. You can be shorting it again with the anticipation that if this is wave one, this will be wave three taking you down further. So I'm looking at something like this. And if this starts breaking the support levels, there's my doji. It makes this very simple. If this opens lower, what do I have? Number one, I have it's going to move in the direction it's going to trade, trade after they open it after a doji. Number two, a doji sandwich would close it down here, which means closing below the previous low. It's time to definitely be short. Slow curve. This is what has made me a huge amount of money. It's just watching this indecisive trading, and then they start slowly curving it back up. Notice what they did here. They gapped it up through the resistance level. I'm buying on this day and buying more on this day because what's happening after a doji? They're opening a positive. Slow curve just is one of your most profitable trade situations. It's a buildup of investor sentiment, and they pop it to the upside. The J-hook pattern, also, after a very strong price move. Here's one of the signals right here. This is called the inverted hammer. 
Notice how they traded it up, they closed back and lower into the trading range. Unofficially, because I've never done a statistical study, only from what I've done over the last 40 years, is if they open up positive the next day after an inverted hammer, stochastics in the oversold area, you probably have about a 95% probability or greater that you're going to be in an uptrend, which makes this very simple. If that's the case, where should this not trade after it opens positive? It shouldn't trade back below this level. If it does, that's not an inverted hammer confirmation. You close out the position and move on to something else. There's your doji, doji, bullish confirmation, basically your J-hook pattern. If this is wave one, wave three is in progress. Fry pan bottom, we call this the classic. Notice how the fry pan bottom, very indecisive, finally breaks out. Not only did it break out through this level, but it broke out through the 200, have a very strong price move. Then you have your doji uh, or your uh, J-hook pattern. What's a prerequisite for a J-hook? A very strong price move. So you're coming out of a fry pan bottom, you're getting a very strong price move. You get profit taking. So if you're taking your profits, you buy back here because we know that if this is wave one, wave three is going to be equivalent. Not only is this very effective for trading options on a timing basis, but it's very effective for doing the correct uh, trade strategy for options. If I can tell this is going to move from this point to this point, I might want to be buying a spread that takes advantage of knowing what my upside potential is. Strong price move, J-hook pattern. This just gives us a clear indication that the profit taking is over. If this had strong investor sentiment, there's your profit taking, and they started back up, that's because this strong investor sentiment is still in progress. There's your doji sandwich, and this is just, again, putting all the probabilities in your favor. Nothing, there's nothing magical about this. This is just common sense investment charts that uh, the Japanese rice traders recognize work over and over. Uh, it's worked for the last 400 years. It'll work for the next 400 years because human emotions aren't going to change when it comes to in their investment funds. Uh, there's kind of a scoop J-hook pattern. They gapped it up. Now, stochastic's not anywhere near the overbought area. They're starting to do a scoop-type pattern, and they can everybody and their brother can see this is a resistance level, and they're gapping it up going into that area. They're not stupid. That means they're, they're going through this level. You want to be a buyer when they gap this up because they're going through this level, meaning if this is wave one, wave three is going to be the same magnitude. This is the best friend. Again, yeah, doji in the oversold area followed by a gap up, especially when it closing above the T-line, you're going to be, have an extremely high probability that not only are you going to be in an uptrend, but you're going to be in a strong uptrend. These are trades that we actually do. I mean, this is, this is where the human emotion is taken out of your trading because with it pulling back like this, what do you think investor sentiment is or the, even the news? It's bad. But as soon as we see something like this, it's telling us that somebody's changed their mind. They've had a hammer, doji, gap up through the T-line. We're ready for the next wave up. Doji gap up, just an extremely high probability trade. When your patterns are confirming, there's we have a failure. This is what we call a blue ice failure. This was named by my late friend Dave Elliott of Wall Street Teachers. Blue ice failures, when they fall through the ice, they find some support, they come back up, they trying to find the hole they fell through, they can't find it, they drown, they go back to the bottom of the pond. Just a high probability uh, uh, trade pattern. And we can see it much more clearly because of the signals that we see right at the support and resistance levels. Now I always uh, made it more effective for people to learn it when I, we were doing sessions together. I would always uh, remind them, how do you catch a polar bear? You cut a big hole in the ice, and then you take a can of peas, and you spread it around the hole. And when the polar bear comes down to take a pea, you kick him in the ice hole. Not very effective as far as investing, but made him remember it. Just very simple patterns. There's your doji's inverted hammer, bullish confirmation, J-hook pattern. The more elements, uh, don't you tell Sandy. Um, the more elements you can 
uh, show that there's been a change of investor sentiment, the higher the probability. And not only is there a high probability that you're going to be in the right direction, but in an uptrending market, all boats are going to rise in an uptrending market. What we're trying to do is find those boats that are going to rise a lot faster. So if we can see there's a strong price move here, we want to be buying the patterns that are going to create another strong price move in an uptrending market. Doji sandwich, scoop type pattern, just gives us that much more effective uh, uh, visual confirmation that there's going to be a strong price move. Just very simple. Patterns staying above the T-line, patterns staying above the T-line, taking profits, inverted hammer, close above the T-line, you're back in the trade. So what we're trying to do is, again, using the candlesticks truisms, one of them being the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to pull back and retest it. So if we're seeing profitability, and we start seeing sell signals in the overbought condition, and they're that far away from the T-line, we're ready to take profits. Worst case scenario is they come back to the T-line, do another buy signal, you can always buy back in. Again, and there's that slow curve breakout. When do we start taking profits? When we see how far away it is from the T-line and we start seeing sell signals. These are doji haramis, which is telling us the buying has stopped. This one I use as an example. We made tons of money with the, this trade because it broke out. And was this time to start selling? Well, we were a good distance away from the T-line, but notice the three T-line still kind of in effect. Then what happened the next day? They took it up even further. So not only were we a great distance away from the T-line, we were a great distance away from the three T-line. So what's that tell us? That tells us we want to go to our 10-minute chart and see when we took profits here, but we bought right back because the 10-minute chart works just as effectively as a daily chart or a one-minute chart or a monthly chart that this was the time they were taking profits. The profit taking was over. We were buying back. Why were we buying back? Because we know that coming out of a fry pan bottom, we're going to get a very strong price move. And what the 10-minute chart was telling us was there was some profit taking, but that strong price move was not over. We were back in the trade, and then we closed it out the next day when it started trading lower. So again, this isn't rocket science. This is just using the common sense elements of when to be in a trade or when to be out of a trade. The further away you are from the T-line, start looking for your sell signals. If they gap up, again, this comes right back to the simple uh, concept that the Japanese rice traders showed us that where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top, and we can see when the selling comes in. If you see a gap up doji in the overbought condition, start taking profits. Buy signals buy signal. There's, this is what we call a flutter kicker signal. The kicker signal is the strongest reversal signal. So when they open it one day and take it down, next day they gap it up and take it the opposite direction. A flutter kicker signal is when they gap it up, they do a doji, and what do we know about the simple rule of a doji? If they open up positive the next day, they're going to take it positive. So we're buying immediately on this day because if you took this doji out of here, you essentially have a kicker signal, which is your strongest signal. And if you can see that's creating a, a pattern, a J-hook pattern, it makes it that much more effective uh, to be buying. Do we always get trades like this? Definitely not. But what the nice thing that we get from candlestick analysis is it puts us in situations where the probabilities of being in a big, big trade is extremely good. It also tells you if it's if you're short and it starts showing it's time to cover your short, it also tells you when to reshort. If this was the uh, candle that told you the bulls were taking, in, taking control, and after two days we can see they couldn't take it up, they were bringing it back down through the candle that told us the bulls were in control, we reshort the position. There's still more downside. That's a trend kicker. Notice how we've had a down day. The next day they gapped it right back up, telling us that this trend is still going to be extremely strong. Breakouts tells us when to start taking profits. This is one that we just started recommending uh, a couple of days ago because there's our J-hook pattern. This is what we call a left-right combo. Notice our doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. Not only did it uh, create a J-hook pattern by breaking out through this level, but it's telling us the T-line is acting as support. What's our upside expectation? Well, if this is wave one, that's what we're expecting for wave three. 
or tomorrow we'll be recommending PQ again because you've got a fry pan bottom, you've got a pull back. Notice the doji sandwich and a close above the T-line. We're going to be buying on positive trading. What's our stop loss? It shouldn't close back below the T-line. What's our upside potential? You can pretty well see there's a trend channel setting up. That could be a trade all the way up here. So again, this is not anything. I tell people uh, you don't have to overanalyze candlestick signals. It's like the lady that uh, brings her parrot into the uh, vet, lays it down on the uh, laid a parakeet down on the table and said, can you fix him? He's been my best friend. And the vet says, well, ma'am, I think your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no, isn't there something you can do? He's been my best friend. And he goes, all right, goes out to the back of his clinic, brings in a cat, lays the cat next, down, next to the uh, parakeet on the table. The cat sniffs it, looks up at the vet, kind of shakes his head. He goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. And she goes, oh, man, he's been my best friend. Isn't there, are you sure? Isn't there something else you can do to make sure? And he goes, all right. Goes out to the back of his clinic, brings in a great big Labrador retriever, comes bounding in, puts his paws up on the table, sniffs the bird, looks up at the uh, uh, vet, kind of shakes his head and goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no. So they go out to the front desk and he goes, all right, well, that'll be $250. She goes, you're charging me $250 to tell me my parakeet's dead? He goes, no, ma'am, I would have done that for 18 bucks. Then he wanted a CAT scan and a lab report after that. So I tell people, everything is obvious what's going on in investor sentiment. The signals have been working for hundreds of years. They're not changing this month, next month, next year, next decade, or next hundred years. And if you've got a trading program, put candlesticks on top of it. You're going to be able to see it that much more clearly. Let's see. I'll take questions here in a bit. But let me, before we go, I think Pat has given us a, uh, oh, uh, a special. We've got a, uh, a, a ebook out that goes through all these uh, uh, processes that are eliminated as far as emotions using candlestick signals. Um, and I think this book is usually like 147 bucks, not 129 bucks. She's given it away for 17 bucks. Now everybody asks, well, why are you giving good information away for that cheap? Because I've discovered over the last uh, 30 years that everybody knows about candlesticks. They just don't know how to use them. And they always say there's too many of them uh, to learn, and they don't always work. And I always came back to one simple premise. If they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. And there's one truism on Wall Street. If something doesn't work, it disappears very quickly. And candlestick signals isn't anything secret. There's no secret formulas. There's no uh, new secret uh, dynamics of how to trade in the market. This stuff is just pure common sense put into a graphic depiction. All we need to do is learn how to use it correctly. So let's see. I think, uh, oh, there it is. Uh, is that the uh, link over there to the right? OK. Anyways, uh, yeah, try it. You're not, uh, for 17 bucks, that's two Starbucks coffees. You're going to learn a heck of a lot. All right. So your support and resistance levels are moving averages versus horizontal support and resistance. Uh, Cassandra, no. The nice thing about candlestick signals is no matter what technical level is happening out there, whether it's a Fibonacci retracement level, it's a trend line. It's a moving average. You can see exactly what's going on in investor sentiment at that level. So it doesn't matter what. Uh, now, the support and resistance level are quite often used the moving averages. But you can use anything that looks like a support or resistance level and just see what's going on in investor sentiment at the time. Uh, yes, there's very simple scans. Uh, uh, I can go through the 7,800 trading entities each day in less than 20 minutes. I can usually let, do it in less than 10 minutes. If you're learning new, you can do it in less than 20 minutes and find the best one, two, three trades or how many trades you're looking for for the next day. How do you use the 3T line? It's just the further away you move from the T line, the more effective the uh, 3T line comes. Uh, what metrics do you use to determine far away from the T line? 
just busy looking at the chart and seeing whether it's moving further away than it normally has been trading. Uh, how do you figure out where the T-line is located? Oh, it does it by itself. It's just the exponential moving average. How to make a 15-minute chart? Uh, most art services will have the options that you can look at a one minute, three minute, five minute, ten minute. I mean, you can click on any chart that you want to. Where can we find the uh, uh, six buy and six sell signals? Chris, they're uh, oh, on our website, www.candlestickforum.com. We've got over 1,300 pages on how to use candlestick signals effectively. Uh, there's charts, there's graphs, there's formulas, everything for showing you the 12 major signals. What is your definition of a doji? My understanding there is a very little difference between opening and closing with equal distance of upside or downside widths. Now doji is, if you can see that the body is extremely small and there's wicks to each side of it, that's a doji. All it's basically telling you is there was indecision between the bulls and the bears. Uh, reading the stochastic seems to add confusion to the candlestick signals, uh, like in PQ. Uh, again, if you're buying the signals, which there are times when you want to be buying the signals, the best place to buy a signal is when it's in the oversold condition. If you're buying a pattern, like the fry pan bottom breakout, or a cradle pattern, or a uh, scoop, or a J-hook pattern, your stochastics may not be and probably will not be in the oversold condition. As a matter of fact, on some of them, they, they, will, uh, they will be probably working when your stochastics are already up in the overbought condition. So uh, after learning the six uh, buy signals and six sell signals, if you learn about the six or seven uh, patterns, again, you're going to start understanding what, what price movements to look for out there with much more ease and the same... Uh, Oh, the same ability as somebody that's been trading the market for 45 years. And say, are you, you are awesome, teacher. <laughs> um, oh, I have to be funny just so people don't fall asleep, Josh. Um, how many hours will the 17? Oh, I don't know. It's it'll be available. Uh, did your book cover your candlestick studies? as you briefly presented today. I've got three books. Uh, one was, the first one was printed by Wiley and Sons. Uh, the second one is High Profit Candlestick Patterns. Yes, they have all this information in there. Not so much on the T-line because the T-line came after those books. And then I've written a third book which shows you how to keep your emotions out of your trading using the uh, uh, candlesticks, which is my main, uh, let's say, Bailey Wick because my biggest fupa always was my own emotions wrecking my trades. Um, this works on uh, Forex just as well as anything else. Uh, what scans are you running? I usually very simply, I'm usually looking for the candlestick signals followed by the biggest percent move the next day. What is the 3T line and the 3 8 exponential? That's what they are. 3 exponential moving average and the 8 exponential moving average. Are your scans included in your book? For, no, just uh, it's more describing how to use uh, the signals. Uh, the scans are, I mean, they were on the website. Did you record this lost internet service? Um, uh, let's see. Did you? I didn't. Did you record this lost internet service? I don't understand that question. Uh, I'd say you know. Uh, uh, can I buy the book? Uh, yeah. Oh, just use that link. That's that's the uh, purpose of the link. The link is over to the right. Uh, I guess. Uh, Yeah, I can see it over there. Um, let me see. I can still take questions for this chat session. Let me hold. Um, yeah. Yep. 
Can you describe, discuss briefly the Triple T trading when you're ordering this? Uh, the Triple T trading was using a combination of the uh, 3T and the T line to get in with the correct signals and patterns. Um, does your book describe? Now, we've got a whole option set, uh, chat room on our, our website for strictly uh, doing options. This is an e-book. You can download it. Do you use scan daily and then 60 minute and so on? Now, I usually scan on a daily basis to see what my trades. I'm a swing trader, so my trades are usually going to last two to ten trading days. So I'm usually uh, uh, checking in the morning and then uh, use the ten minute chart to, for my entry and exit strategies. Uh, does the ebook have the 12? Uh, I'm sure the, they're mixed in there. Uh, because you're not usually going to see anything as far as the signals that aren't those 12 major signals because the others work uh, aren't around enough or they don't occur often enough to even uh, make it worthwhile learning them. Now, my first book, I've got all of them in there because I tell people you don't have to learn them, just kind of look at them and recognize them. So if you happen to do see them on a chart, at least you can say to yourself, yeah, this is a uh, chart pattern. Uh, or this is a signal pattern. Let me go back and refresh my memory and see what it is. But 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to be using the 12 major signals. And more than likely, if you find one uh, in that one-tenth of 1% 1 of the other time, there's probably a, a major signal that you're going to use someplace else anyways. What software do you recommend? Whatever. I mean, there's good ones. I've, I do my uh, scanning with uh, Metastock, with TCNet. Um, I do a lot of my trades through Thinkorswim uh, uh, and some of the major firms. Uh, the uh, website is candlestickforum.com. The link is half cut off at the bottom of the page. Oops. That's, I think it's over to the right. Um, Uh, I think, yes, this, Russ, this is recorded. What is your most consistent uh, strategy? Uh, I've done sessions, or I've done uh, 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 training sessions on quantifying the signals. A lot of people ask, which are the strongest signals? And there aren't any. They're all just as good as each other, except the kicker signal is the strongest. It's just that what type of market conditions will show which signals are occurring uh, at any particular time. This month, it might be a, uh, the dojis at the bottom working. Next month, it might be hammers at the bottom. But they all work equally well. But I do have a uh, video showing approximately 18 different signals and patterns that are going to be more effective. For example, the number one is the, what we call the best friend. That's the doji followed by a gap up in the oversold condition. Is this available in hard copy? There's, I've got three books in hard copy, all about 450 pages apiece. How do we join the chat room and learn more about how to find and use the uh, key line? That's probably all in that uh, link that has been sent out. How do you get the first book? Uh, oh, they're on Amazon, but... Uh, you're going to get them cheaper if you go to the website. I think they're the cheapest on our website. Does any any time frame work for option trading? Uh, depends on what your your style of option trading is. Now, I'm an option trade swing trader. So again, my option trades are on for two to ten trading days. So I'm usually using the uh, daily chart and then my entry and exit strategies based off the five minute and the ten minute chart. Let's see. Uh, uh, okay. In TOS, what is the T line called? Just it's just the eight exponential moving average. The only reason we call it the T line is a short for trigger entry line. Does this book have different or added information? Your other books do not have. Uh, it has a lot of the information from book three on eliminating your emotions. Um, 
Uh, Paul, I think they will be sending out everybody that's uh, registered in here uh, a copy of the uh, today's session. To make sure I am clear, the ebook that is offered covers use of the T line. Uh, it should. I mean, it's the cumulative information. Yes, it was. It was one of my latest uh, writing, so it's it's probably got the T line in there. But. I tell people, don't take my word for it. Just put the eight exponential moving average on your charts and see how they work. Uh, you'll be surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised, at how effective they work. And that's the nice thing about using candlesticks, is there are so many people that come to me and say, oh, we've tried this and we've tried that and it didn't work. Uh, the nice thing about candlesticks is they do work. And to approve them, you can add a another indicator to see if that improves the probabilities of those charts working. If it doesn't, you take it off and you're right back to where uh, you were still in with, with good probabilities. Uh, candlestickforum.com. What parameters do you use in the moving average exponential? What parameters do you use in the moving average? I don't know what that means, Steve. Uh, um, yeah, it's the eight exponentials, the T line, the three T lines, the three exponential, and then the other three, the 50, the 200, and the 20 are all simple moving averages. Um, most of my cars, Paul, are relatively good shape. They aren't exciting cars. I've got mostly a lot of four doors. And I've got a lot of convertibles that are newer, like the 65 Chrysler convertible, 66 Cadillac convertible, 68 Chrysler convertible. They're they're in good condition. I just I don't have enough not not muscle cars, just uh, kind of classic cars. Uh, I can't do individual charts because I've got uh, uh, John. I've got. Uh, PowerPoint up versus the charts. Doji followed by a gap up is the best signal you said. Do you enter on the gap up day? Yes. Immediately. This session is recorded. Okay. With that, everybody have a good afternoon. Um, if there's something that I missed, Email me, steve at candlestickforum.com. I'll be glad to answer it. How do you scan for these candlesticks? Uh, very simply, you put the formula in. Uh, you're scanning software, and you click on it each day to update it, and it will show you the signals you're looking for. The gap up, do you wait to close? No. Buy it on the open. If you see a doji in the oversold condition and it gaps up the next day, you buy immediately because the probabilities are that after that day of indecision, they've told you what their decision is. Uh, we do have a separate options room. We've got, uh, I think, about 300 people usually in our uh, regular trading room. And so that we weren't disturbing everybody with option terms and uh, trades, we've set up a separate option trading room where you usually have maybe 30 people in there. OK. Good. I've got my. Uh, I've got a '68 uh, oh, Chrysler uh, Newport convertible, in excellent shape. All right. Just to be sure, the gap up does not need to be above the T line when when you buy immediately. No. Now, another thing with the T line is if I if it's been trading close to a T line all the way down and then you have a, a reversal yeah I'm probably gonna wait for it to close or trade back up above the T line on the other hand just like we said when it's overbought the further away you move down away from the T line the higher the probability is going to come back up and test it so if we see a candlestick reversal signal way below the T line and we see it confirming we know we can be buying because the worst case scenario is it's probably going to come back up in the T line if it fails there we're still probably going to be out with a with a profit. 
Oh, to join the uh, options trading room, uh, Gene, you email Abraham at candlestickforum.com. He'll give you all the details. Uh, the option trading room is a consistent, what do I want to say, a, well, just like our chat room during the day, it's a consistent learning process. I usually come in for a couple hours each day, usually an hour in the morning and maybe uh, a little bit in the afternoon and then for 30 or 40 minutes on the close. And then I also step into the option trading room. What we're trying to do in the option trading room is we're not trying to teach new fangled option strategies. We're just trying to set up the correct option strategy to go with each chart pattern. There's some times where you buy the calls outright or the puts outright, but that's probably about 20% of the time. The majority of the time, you're better off in a spread uh, or another strategy. Uh, we don't have an E-mini e trading room. I used to trade E-minis, but at the end of the day, I felt like a wet dish rag, uh, and I was trying to make a few extra bucks on the E-mini trades at the end of the day instead of watching what my total portfolio was doing. So it's much more relaxing for me to just uh, swing trade. Um, do you have a daily stocks whoops, selection? You said signals to trade. No, I trade the whole whole market because in less than 20 minutes, I can find the best one, two, three, five, seven trades the next day. I don't have to eliminate it to, by reducing my universe that I'm looking at. On that doji gap up the following day, where is your stop place? Back below the doji. It shouldn't come back down below that low, that level. Um, spreads help with margin requirements and control risk. Yes, there's a bunch of benefits for spreads. It reduces your exposure money-wise. It reduces the price movement to make an extremely good return, and it reduces your break-even. Okay, with that, everybody have a good uh, spring afternoon. We'll see you in the chat rooms. Steve? Brett, thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll see you all later.